Welcome back to Tea Time, everyone. We are so happy and so excited because today we have the amazing, the beautiful, the talented, the funny as fuck. Funny as fuck. Lisa and Walter. <laughs> That's the best intro I've ever gotten. Shut up. Ever. Really? Yeah. No way. Thanks. I'm so honored. Thanks, mem, mem, mem. I'll come around with you everywhere you go. And just Please do. You. I'm just, I'd Please be so do. happy. Can I admit something to you? Please. I'm sure you get this all the time. It's not that I didn't know. But when I actually connected all the dots in my head about all of the work that you've done and all of the things that I've seen you in, and then I was like, oh, my God, Parent Trap. Because it seems so long ago. Oh, my God. Like, doesn't it feel trap. like I should be 80? No. No. Oh, okay. no. I mean, I guess when I think about being like the little girl that I was watching it, but it was just like, oh, my God, she was in Parent Trap. I was. Oh, I was. The and best. It's, it, thank you. The I appreciate best. it. The most important thing is the response that I get still yeah. from kids that grew up with it, from adults now that it's meaningful to, who felt like they didn't belong, kids that were mm -hmm. queer or parents were divorced or, you know, othered in some way, so responded to my character. And, you know, we've done some kind of like deep dramatological <laughs> Is that a word? Yeah. I made it and up. We're going to define it right here. There you go. <laughs> we did a deep dive into it, a girlfriend and me one time, and we were like, maybe because Chessie kept the secret of the kids and loved them and helped them and wasn't judgy or like, what's wrong with you? She was like, no, the parents are wrong. You're perfect and fine and I love yeah. you. And so kids always felt very accepted mm -hmm. by my character. And then that translated onto me and it's just because she was it's, so it's warm wonderful. and warm Aww. and loving and kind Thank which you. you are too and yeah. i mean Aww. just meeting you Thank um you. recently you at d23 cry. i was like oh my gosh she's such a light she is. but remember Thanks, you're welcome remember the part where you see annie hallie and annie hallie, i yeah. am annie and you see the other one and you get so i was like oh I my just god just gave myself chills yeah. <laughs> can i hug her um <laughs> people People who come to see, I, I'm doing stand-up again on my hiatuses, and anytime I meet someone and the first thing they say is, I love you from that movie, I love that movie, I say, do you want a hug? And they're, oh, yes! That's like, their whole being just explodes. And I'm like, I have that kind of grace. I have that kind of ability to give someone joy for a minute. Yeah. You know, I, I was trained, trained as an actor, like Shakespeare and the Greeks and all of that coming up. People don't know me from that. They either know me from doing half hour comedy or years ago it was just stand up. But you do stuff as an actor, emotional journeys before you do the scene. Yeah. So in the I Am Annie scene, I remember that I was sitting quiet in a corner. Dennis Quaid was lurking somewhere and I wasn't drooling over him for that minute. Oh, of course I was just not. sitting of course in the corner. Not. And thinking about the times that I had to leave my baby girl, because I did stand up after my son was about 18 months old, my mm -hmm. oldest. And then I was doing stand up all the way through when I was pregnant with my daughter. I stopped doing gigs three days before I had her. Mm -hmm. I went back to work when she was five weeks old. Oh my God. Oh nursing, pumping into a Ziploc bag, being on these long weekend, four or five days away. Then I'd come home and I would just smell her from the front mm -hmm. door. I would just, we're mammals. Yeah. We're like, that's my young. Mm -hmm. That is my yeah. gene. And I would just hold her and smell her head. And so every time before we would shoot that scene, 72 takes over three days, Whoa. I would be in a place where I was away from my child and I was just seeing her again. Okay, I have some questions. Let's just wow. break this down. What compelled you to leave your child at such a young age to go working? Was it an addiction to work? Did you need to? I needed to. My family didn't really have money. My mother was a public school teacher. My father worked for the government. He was a physicist for NASA, but they don't make very much money. Mm -hmm. Still a government grade 18 job. And he had a second family and more kids. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they had a house. Mm -hmm. But, okay. we, you know, I paid for my own school. I worked three jobs. There was never a time in my life where I didn't work three jobs. Wow. I waited tables. I typed Catholic philosophical journals, transcribed them, sometimes from Latin, Whoa. at a time when nobody knew how to type just me because my mother insisted and I made two dollars and ten cents an hour Jesus doing that Christ. and I I sold cosmetics at Lord and Taylor so I was I was a working girl yeah you were. all right and then why 75 takes 73 73 two but 72. Um, you were all were so close um 
Well, and it's not like the show I'm on now, we have three cameras that shoot everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. On TV, as you know, it's like we do my side, you do your side. Yeah. And for camera, you do everything at once mm -hmm. because you have an audience and their reaction is genuine. In movies, <laughs> we do, you're shooting me. I'm doing a big crying thing and you're hopefully react. It's awful. I'm not acting right <laughs> she now. She studied for that, you yeah. guys. And I did yeah. not. I can actually <laughs> that's, cry. That's Shakespeare. Wait, wait, hang on. Oh, I can see it coming. Let's, yeah. Ready? She's about to cry. No, the lip is quivering. The lip is quivering. That's a good one. That's good. Oh, wow. That's good. Emmys. Okay, let's go on. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Emmys, Emmys, Emmys. Beautiful. Um. You could you at home you can do this too. Just make your face in the shape of how it is when you cry. Yeah, You'll and you'll cry. cry. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. It helps if you think of really sad shit too. <laughs> but, <laughs> Chopping onions. It's so like you did good. Yesterday. You need a tissue? Um, but it, no. Oh, okay. But anyway, that's what the dress is for. <laughs> I did a movie called Shall We Dance, where yes. I was supposed to, they Can tried to make it? me gain a whole bunch of weight. It's a ballroom dance movie. Yes. Oh, we all so, we know what it is. Yeah. So J Lo, Richard Gere. So anyway, I'm supposed to lose my skirt in this one scene and have the world see my giant ass and be horrified about it. And I'm like, first of all, that character would not have been horrified because she mm -hmm. just didn't care. Yeah. I was personally horrified <laughs> because I spent all of my time trying to lose weight to be this skinny version of the 1980s mm -hmm. body that they wanted white women to be mm -hmm. the whole time I was growing up. I the big ass wasn't in stuff yeah. except for j-lo only hers she started say, it just, she did I just her ass thank you yeah, yeah. Thank the you. italian well, asses before that were not accepted she started I it know. for the light-skinned people black people were already thick oh but they weren't 100 just to be Dave fair wait used i used to say to me girl why are you listen to the brothers you grew up with exactly why, wear the big ass proud <laughs> yeah. what's wrong with you but wait serious yeah. question what j-lo yeah I love her. She yeah. has a crush on her. I've been well. I just, Cause, for, cause for can I tell you something? Yeah. She literally glows. She has a perfume called Glow <laughs> yeah. from across the room. I'm like, is she got an inside light? Yeah, she you does. Know, she um, does. <laughs> but I just want to know what she smells like. Such a good question. <laughs> Such a good question. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> Stick I'm around. You. I didn't mean to scare you. No, no you we didn't. love it. You are validating me. You're making me feel. You're. I'm redeeming myself. A just the way you think okay roses and money N number two i'm walking it was our first week of rehearsal i walked behind j-lo and went oh my god mm -hmm. like f like but and she was just like what and i was like you 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 smell like candy mm -hmm. i want to I want to, don't take this the wrong way, but I want to lick you. Oh. Lick. I said Got lick. It. Yeah, lick. Lick. But also eat. And, <laughs> and she was like, oh. And I was like, who are you? What are you wearing? And she went, me. And I was like, all right, smart ass. And she was like, no, it's me. It's my, it's my scent. And I was like, oh my God, that is the most delicious thing. But if you thing. buy that, it won't world. smell like that. No, she, she sent it to me. I went to my dressing room the next day. There was in the, an entire box mm -hmm. of every single item in that line. I did, put it on and did not smell. No, it. Yeah, because it works with no. her pheromones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. something askew with that. But it is I, truly she, one she, of the most delicious it. smelling human beings Ever on the planet. Wow. Okay, so you got a box from J Lo. That. Did you get like a coconut cake from Tom Cruise? No. Oh. I, I, yeah, I did a movie with him and did not get the coconut cake. I'm a little bummed. You should Everyone be bummed. Everyone loves that damn coconut We're cake. We're going to talk to him about it because you deserve a coconut cake. I 100%, Tom. <laughs> Mm -mm. You know what that makes me want to ask you to do? Put your hand in this pot and pull out a topic because it might not be a cake, but it'll be something else. Mm -mm. So many topics in there, right? It's random. It's super random. Is there one in here. <laughs> what are we talking what about? What are we talking about? Resilience. Oh, I love that. And it too. Yeah. You gotta be resilient to do what you two do, that's for sure. That's this for industry sure. Got that is right. ridiculous. Yeah, that is. No. So it's like you're going, you're going, you're going. Whack them all. Yeah. Going, going, going. Over here. Going, going, going. Two times. 
two times, not the two times. It's true. Well, that's man. life it's in really general, true. though. I have a question for you. Mm. On your set now, Abbott Elementary, you have some amazing, resilient people and actors on your show that have a history so, so deep. Can you just talk about it a little bit? I, I love the show. I don't need to talk about the show. I want to talk about the people. Yes, thank you. And the people are the reason why this is, the show is a success. I mean, our writers are great. Quint is an amazing boss. She is the best A student you'll ever meet. You know, she had it planned yeah. what each season was going to be in terms of an arc and specifics and getting a, a team of people to put it together. But the reason why the show, I think, is so cohesive and, and, and affects people the way it does is because each member of that ensemble cast is bringing something a little bit different. The mix is chemistry and which you can't you can't make that up yeah. works or it doesn't. But also, as you say, the history of the people that are in it. Cheryl Lee Ralph, I'm going to I'm going to talk about first because very much like my experience, she had enormous success. People recognize the presence that she is. Mm. You I mean, we have a, a fun time with it. We goof on it sometimes and she'll be on set and some little thing will happen and all of a sudden it becomes a speech and the speech is an award winning i want to thank the people of the of the goat academy for recognizing the ex look into my eyes Ooh, not that not yes. that one i know <laughs> There's always a part of the word after the word ends. Oh, yes, for sure. And understand <laughs> exactly <laughs> what you are bringing. The tonality that you're it's doing right now is on. so her. I can't. She's, because I'm going to tell you that the the, the effect yeah. that she has just standing is, is different from any other human being. And for her to have gone through, because she went through her time, she had her TV show, she had her heartbreak. She will hear her talk about being in a movie with Robert De Niro and him turning around and saying to her, they will not know what to do with you. Mm. And he was, because he knew That's it. Right. Yeah. And this is a man who falls in love with black woman after black woman. He knew how beautiful she was, yeah. how exceptional and sexy and vibrant and all of the wonderful things. But they would not give her that starring woman yeah. role not like as a dark skinned yeah. black mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the problem with our business is people won't tell you. They, Nobody's going to no. say to you, yeah, you're cold right now. Your manager might. But even they won't because they also have to make sure they stay in your good graces so you don't fire them. Exactly yeah. right. The, somebody else is going to Somebody else. Job. Exactly. You re, and it's, it's, if you're new to this industry, I think that's one of the biggest lessons that you learn quickly is that people will kiss your ass through thick and thin. And the people who tell you the truth that you get mad that they tell you the truth, you should listen to those people. You know, I've definitely right. been in rooms with people. I'm like, you know, that's not that funny. You should like get better. <gasps> I am an actress. I'm like, I didn't say that you aren't. I'm just saying, you're not funny. Go take a class. There's ain't nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm here to tell you the truth of what I see. People ask me on, on social media, how do I want to be a famous actress? Mm -hmm. How do I do that? And I'm like, I can't. I can't tell you how to be famous. That's not that I planned on being. Yeah. I can tell you how to go about being an actress. There you go. Number one, go find you a show or a class or a stage performance somewhere or your local theater or community theater and learn how to act. Mm -hmm. And not just how you act in an improv class. How do you get onto a stage with a bunch of different departments, respect all of them, understand that all of that is helps that this man is doing is helping us make what we're exactly. doing. Exactly. What we what you guys did ahead of time to set this up. All of it. The matters. business. The business of it. The theater of it. Not just yourself. Exactly. Exactly. So learn how to do that. And then you start to see, is this something I want to put my time into for free? Do you want to pick up your phone and shoot a movie with your friends? Do you want to write, spend your off hours instead of getting high and playing video games, write a script yep. that reflects something different and truthful mm. and then put that up and, and put it on YouTube, do whatever. Yeah. But you have an avenue to do it that we didn't have. There wasn't this. 
there was you made it here in, in you LA go, or New York. You, go, that was, mm-hmm. you go stand in the line with the audition room signing in a, a, on a on a wall of seats of everyone that you see every single time. Every week. Hi, hi, yeah. hey, yeah. how yeah. you doing? Oh, I and brought brownies in. this time. Exactly. You go in, you come out, and you're like, well, there's another one. It's there's an. It's funny because there's some just professional auditioners. Yeah. There's some actors, and then there's some stars, and yeah. that's the industry we live in. That's right. And this. When they say, what is that? How do I do it? How do I make it? I say, you, I don't say resilience. I say, the only secret I can tell you is you can't give up. Hey, babe, guess what? Kiki Palmer's podcast is back and it's so good. Yeah, girl, she has questions for days. From the existential to the inconsequential. From culture to pop culture to pop science. And now she's diving into the brains of entertainment's best and brightest to get some answers. I heard that she has Snoop Dogg, Jordan Peele, Quinta, John Stamos, even Amy Poehler. The list goes on. Kiki is getting to the bottom of the burning topics that keeps us up at night. I mean, we love Kiki, and I know that anyone else who loves Kiki is going to be obsessed with Baby This Is Kiki Palmer. (laughs) Everyone's going to love it because she's her most authentic self, going all in on everything in her life and the lives of her celebrity guests. Follow, watch, and listen to Baby This Is Kiki Palmer on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, watch full episodes on Kiki's own YouTube channel. Listen to Baby This Is Kiki Palmer early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. You know, maybe that is one of the magic things about the cast. Coming back to that is this cast of people that has seen its shares of ups and downs. You know, William Stanford Davis, who plays Mr. Johnson, this is his first series regular role. The man's been in the business for 40 plus years and has done everything. He's done, you know, the, the guest star and the guest week and the guest arc. And he is so incredibly grateful to have a job to go to, not have to worry about being old and poor, poor, like where you don't know where you're gonna be when you need to be Mm -hmm. in a home, Mm -hmm. kind of poor. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl and I both know what it is to to have that success be right there. And then I went and did radio. I hosted a radio show for almost three years. My kids were in high school and I couldn't go on location. And I'll be honest with you, I couldn't go on location I also was no longer in my 40s. Mm-hmm. And so the opportunity to go do a part in a movie, I can like that. I still look good. Mm-hmm. But it was... You do look good. Thank you. You're welcome. But it's, you know, what the business has yep. for you. It's like, oh, you're going to be, you're playing that sexy older woman. You're 37. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, right? Right? They were offering me grandmother roles when I was 33, Jesus 34. Christ. I was like, but here's the thing. I wouldn't do them. Because I'm like, I'm not going to tell America that this is what women are supposed to look unless it's in the story. Unless you've got me having a baby of 15 and she has a baby of 17. I'm not going to do that. Those are those little moments that Hollywood does to society. That little moment right there is why we have physical problems when we look into the mirror. Yeah. Because they will hire a 33-year-old to play a mother. Yeah, uh, this is what you're supposed to look And I'll tell you what, I was too much of a feminist for that. Mm-hmm. If you would ask me 15 years after that, you know, I would have taken that job. Have, I should have taken it. I could have banked that money. I need that money now. Shit. What was wrong with me? It's also just damn inside. integrity. And also, you said something that I wanted to speak on, which was how the industry would kind of like push you out or say, no, you can't do this. And, and, you know, you're here today, but then tomorrow you're trash. And I think that in life, even if you're not an actor, you can find those moments too. You're in these like big movies with these yeah, big stars. Yeah. And but... it's not even, I felt it. It was like, my team was like, this is, this it. is it. This is it. You're the, on the list now. And then, and then we're in no, yeah. right. You next year, you're going to get the invite to the vanity fair party. Then that'll be never the got year. it. Never got it. Right. And it's just this thing. But I think what I'm trying to get at is mad at them both of you left me hanging both oh, of them oh you know that oh, i thought you were yeah. just saying yeah Calm she was down. like wait you were going like that but this is perfect because this is why we had to say resilient right yes. because here's the deal i just do this i could I feel every time i yeah. could right i could feel really shitty about myself <laughs> but i don't they get it now but my point is is that in my own life i have felt like i'm 
on the sidelines. And I've said this so many times where it's like, I'm almost there, right? I this was a chair. <laughs> no, that's a Go wall. Ahead. That I'm almost there, that I am in the right crowd or like my work is finally starting to pick up or I feel like someone just listened to me and they heard what I had to say and they understand who I am, they yeah. value me. And then it's like, but nothing comes of it. Nothing. And I think that we all, everyone who is listening, everyone who experiences life can probably put themselves in a position where they feel that way. And the only way to get through, I think, is to continue on your path, to be resilient. And it's so hard because I think that when you get knocked down and knocked down, it's hard to pull yourself back up. For a person as pessimistic as my people are, Sicilians are very pessimistic. It takes an extraordinary amount of optimism to every day wake up and go, I know it sucked, today's the day. For me and Cheryl, I know it sucked. That's why Cheryl broke into that song at the Emmys. That's why we go to work every day happy at 4.30 a.m. Marilyn Monroe said, they said to her, what would you have said if 50% of the people that you auditioned for said you had no talent? She said, if 100% said I had no talent, they'd all be wrong. <laughs> You have and to believe in yourself. That that just comes from you. You know, I talk about it in the act and the in the. Oh, because you have comedy. a comedy special coming up, right? I yes, and it was Cheryl's idea. In fact, she came to see me in Philadelphia last summer. I talk about some raw stuff. Love it. And I thought she'd be like, oh, I thought there'd be a <laughs> lot of pearls. And I came off, and she was done. I could hear her laugh from on stage because she's got that bark. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Cheryl's very much like me with the bark laugh, and she was like, girl. You need to be doing that. this. People don't know that you do this. She said, we need to do this as a show. And I said, really? And she goes, yeah, and no, I want to produce it with you. <laughs> so we wound up Work Wives Productions, produced my comedy special. And we still, because we went right into shooting the show, I haven't finished cutting it. But we will take it out I as a series, I as love not just writing. me, but for other women, uh, other people that their voice doesn't get to get heard Good. for whatever reason. They're That's a little amazing. bit older or they're not the the bought commodity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll give that platform to other people, too. I love that. Yeah. Love so that. we're excited about that. I talk about a little bit about how my generation is so different in that nobody cared where we were ever. Nobody looked for us. We went out in the morning in the summer, didn't come back till the street lights came on yep. in between. Nobody asked. Mm -hmm. We were just gone on yeah. bikes or something, going on dangerous rides at the carnival. And coming out of it and being resilient. Mm -hmm. That was it. You had to because mm -hmm. people weren't paying attention. That's why so many of us were molested because yeah. <laughs> yeah. nobody Jesus. was watching. Yeah. Janice Dickinson said, no lifeguard at the pool. And think about this. You really want to blow your own mind. I love doing that. This is where we are now. And everybody's like... I watched both my boys be completely addicted, not to social media. Neither one of them really ever got into that. It was gaming, Video but it's still, it, yeah. it's still screen. And I'm, I'm telling you that that shit's real. When they lose their minds because yeah. you're like, I am turning off your ability to go Game. here so yeah. that because you're failing school and these are kids that should, with their test results should be straight A's, right? You see it in real time. Now throw this onto the, the log onto the fire. Add AI onto that. Add AI. What happens when we are have all of the devices that we have and now we can make it perform for us? You give yeah. it a suggestion, all of a sudden this thing is Terrifying. sucking your Johnson. By the way, where's the need for us anymore? No. Don't, well, it's not, I don't want to, I'm not but trying to blow my heart out. You'll still, you guys will I'm still saying, be if needed. You can make my AI just a little more toned. Oh you my know, God. I'm not even saying smaller. Just I'm toned. just saying, just toned. Let's, Let's toast. Cheers. Just toned. <laughs> just toned. Just toned. Toast to that. Today we are toasting to someone who shares my name or my initials rather, Eminem. Marshall Mathers, Miranda Mayday. Anyway, we're toasting to Eminem because he is going to be a grandpa. That's right. And I, I just think cannot. that's crazy. Oh God, I, I need a wrap. I need a slim diapy. <laughs> oh my God, that's so slim good. Diapy. I, I need Something. a slim diapy. Can you believe that Eminem is going to be a grandfather though? No. He's been so many places. He's I'm so excited so for places. it because that is the grand I love you grandpapa you know I love you so much like we're really evolving and growing up but we're him, so really granddad. if when Eminem's a granddad we're old can you imagine so being old. that kid oh, oh and like God, looking yes. back at your grandfather's work how old is Eminem that's the thing he's not that old he's is not he even like, in his 50s 
Is he? No. no I don't he's think like 48, so. you think? Or yeah, 46, I think he's like 46, 44. Let's check. Let's check. Please, please check. I can't. I cannot. Oh my God. Because he had the baby. He had the oldest yeah. one young. Yeah. Oh, my God. Eminem is 51. <gasps> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Good night, you. America. We're we getting <laughs> Goodbye. And I'm leaving. Goodbye. And oh, that's no. a wrap. <laughs>